عشر من لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا بالبيوت والتوحيد له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد الحمد لله our praise our thanks our gratitude is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى for firstly making us Muslims and allowing us allowing us to accept his eternal religion. The only religion that is accepted by him, the only religion that is regarded by Allah Azza wa Jalla Rabbil Alameen as Deen al Haq. Allah says in the glorious book, O Nabi, our Sawa Rasulah who will be the one who will be the one who will be the one who will be Allah says, Allah said this Prophet, his messenger, bin Huda, with guidance, with Deen al Haq, and the true religion. Many of the group now will say what's meant by this term, Al-Huda, is Al-Nafi, beneficial knowledge. Or Deen Al-Haq, true religion, Amal Salih, righteous deeds. So the two main components of our religion, simple, easy components, beneficial knowledge, righteous action. Beneficial knowledge taken from the Book of the Sunnah, righteous action to the best of your ability. And a lot is no doubt. But from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings is the month of Ramadan. A month that we should all utilize and take advantage to do these two things. To get more beneficial knowledge, to read more, to learn more, to study more, and to implement more, to practice more. It lies no doubt. If you look at some of the wisdoms of fasting, Hanif, tell me something that you can't do in Ramadan. Why you're fasting in the daytime? Can't eat, what else? Intimate acts, what else? What about backbiting? Tell carrying? What about looking at things that are impermissible? Are those things haram outside of Ramadan? No. Without a doubt. They're worse than the month of Ramadan. Because virtuous times and virtuous places, crimes are, are, are worse, they're uglier. However, look at the hikmah behind that. And that is Ramadan aids you to implement what you already know. You already know Salam. But when you're fasting, Allah no doubt, you have more shyness. Right? You have more consciousness. You say, wait, no, this ain't right. Nah, nah, nah. This ain't cool. Not Ramadan. Haram things. Something that you're selling, that's haram. Something that you put into your body, that's haram. Something that you know that you normally practice and do. In the month of Ramadan, you try to clean up your act. So, so the point that we're trying to get to is what? Is that this shows us, what does it show us? It shows us that the month of Ramadan aids us in getting beneficial knowledge and implementing that beneficial knowledge. Things that you already know, it's wajib. But now you know I have to implement it. Okay? So therefore, this is a very important concept. So this is the first blessing of all making us Muslims. Secondly, is the blessing of being guided to the way of the Prophet والسلام, being guided to the Sunnah. A knowledge of the Sunnah, loving the Sunnah, implementing the Sunnah, knowing his companions, following their guidance, having the value and the appreciation for knowledge in his people, and the blessings of Allah Azza wa are countless. Today, we're going to take a selection from one of my favorite books, and that is the book of Imam Abu Isa, a Tibri, Rahimahullah, called Al Jami', and some call it Al Jami' Al Sahih. The book of Imam Abu Tibri, one of the great Imams of hadith of the third century and one of the most brilliant pupils of Imam al-Bukhari was Imam al-Tibri. He says in his book, أَبْوَابُ السَّوْمِ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَبَابُ مَا جَاهِ فَضْلِ شَهِ رَمَضَانِ He says, أَبْوَابُ السَّوْمِ أَتِبْنِي رَحِمَ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ عِنَهُ كُتُبْ بَيْكُمْ كِتَابْ كَلَبِ فِي Abwab al Sawmi al Rasulullah says the chapters of fasting with regards to the Rasul alayhi salatu salam. I pay close attention to what the Tibbani did. He says, Abwab al Sawmi al Rasulullah. Hadith speaking about fasting from the Messenger of Allah. That's the very first thing. He didn't mention the campaigns, he didn't mention what the Rabbi the past said. He made his cornerstone. Our Rasulullah, what he said, what he did, and what he allowed with regards to fasting. So whenever you want to learn about fasting, that should be your first step. What did Muhammad do? 
how do we fast, how do we pray, what do we say in his prayers, what do we break his fast and on, what do we eat for so Lord? what do we do, what was authentically proven from him, as we said before, the Master of Allah is just like told the companions, during that Hajj, which was, his blessed life is coming to an end, he said, I need an he said, take your rituals from me. Learn how to perform Hajj and Umrah from me. So as a student of knowledge, whenever you want to establish something, that's your first starting place. What did the Rasul say? What did the Rasul do? What did he prevent? What did he allow? What did he keep silent about? And then you move forward. Not the opposite. You don't start off saying, the people of knowledge say this. The man of Quran says this. Sheikh Quran says that. My country says this. My country says that. Muhammad says that. What was his so Timothy Rahimallah says, Babu Maja'a fi Fadli Shami Ramadan. It says the superiority and the excellence of the month of Ramadan. Hadathna Abu Kuray bin Muhammad ibn Ala ibn Kuray. Fala Hadathna Abu Bakr ibn Ayash and Al Amash and Ibn Sali and Abi Ray to Baba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I can over related to me Shari Ramadan as Sufi that is Shayatin. ومرضة الجن وغلقت أبواب النار فلم يفتح منها باب وفتحت أبواب الجنة فلم يغلق منها باب وينادي مناد يا باب الخير أقبل ويا باب الشر أقصر ولله العتقاء من النار وذلك كل ليلة قال أبو الذابي عن عبد الرحمن بن عوف وابن مسعود وسلمان أتلمذي رحمه الله مساج Muhammad ibn Quraid Abu Al-A'i says Abu Quraid Muhammad ibn Ala ibn Quraid referred to us from Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash from Amash from Abu Salih from Abu Huraira and the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam says the very first night of the month of Ramadan the demons are chained down and the evil extreme jinn are also locked down the gates of the hellfire are shut and the doors to paradise are opened up. And there isn't any door that remains shut or open from hell and from heaven. And someone calls out, Ya Babi Khair, Oh you who wants to do some good, Aqbid, focus. And someone also calls out, Ya Babi Shar, Oh you who wants to do some evil, Aqsid, hold back, stop. The Prophet ﷺ then tells us, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ And there will be many people who will be saved and will be emancipated from the fire. وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَيْلَ He says that is every single night of the month of Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he tells us in this hadith, a tibbidi, he says the chapter of the excellence and the superiority of the month of Ramadan. He doesn't speak about fasting. He doesn't speak about the Quran, but he says the month itself is excellent. The month itself is a blessed, virtuous time. A Tirmidhi Rahimahullah, he says, Haddathana Abu Quraid, Muhammad ibn Ala ibn Quraid, from Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash, from Amash, from Abu Salih, from Abu Huraira, that the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salam, said, the very first night of the month of Ramadan, several things happened. Number one, he says, Sufi did the Shi'atun. The demons are chained down. Wa maradatul jinn. And the evil jinn are also locked down in the hell back from Muslims. Then what happens, number two. He tells us in Hadith. Wa ghulliqat abu'abu. After the devils are chained down, what's the second benefit that you get from the month of Ramadan? The doors. The doors of what? He says here, وَقُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ None of them remain open. Allah Akbar. Number three, he then says, وَفَتِحَتْ The gates of Jannah are open up. What happens after that? فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا بَابٍ None of the gates of paradise are shut. They are all opened up. The fourth benefit you get from Muslim Allah is what? وَيُنَادِي مُنَادِنْ 
Who is the person that calls out? From the angels, the imams, the khatib, the people of knowledge. Allahu Allah. Al Muhammad says here, Munadin. A caller calls out to the slave. What does he say? Ya Baghi, Al Khayri, Akbid. Oh, you who wants good, who wants to do some good, righteous actions, focus. Akbid. Devote yourself to that man. Allahu Akbar. Now is the time to step up. A higher notch, a higher level. If you're doing that which is Hasan, in this month you do that which is Ahsan. And if you're doing that which is Sayyid, in this month you should at least try to do that which is what? Hasan. There you go. Right? It then says, Wallahi utaqahu min al nar. And Allah Azza wa has certain slaves that will be emancipated from the fire. That's the fifth benefit from the month of Ramadan. People during this month will be saved from going to hell. And the fifth one is what? Or the sixth benefit is what? Every single night. In other words, don't misunderstand it. Don't think it's just for the beginning of the month. Don't think it's just for Friday, for the khutbah. Don't think it's only if you go to the masjid for Taraweeh. Every single night, this phenomenon takes place. People are encouraged to do good, and they're warned from doing evil. Atimidhi ta'ala he then says, وَفِي ibn he says, and there are three other companions who narrate a similar to, a similar hadith to this. There are who? Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and Salman al Farisi radiallahu anhu. And that's another benefit that we can take from the book of Timothy is that he gives you more hadith. As one of the scholars of the past said, the book of Timothy is, is one of, if not the most beneficial book of the six books. Because it gives you everything and everything benefit from it. Bukhari is an amazing book. But there are certain things inside Bukhari that you can only get if you're a specialist and an expert in that field. The book of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah, is a tremendous book. But it's similar to Bukhari. Abu Dawood, the Imagine, the Sai, the Timothy, everyone can benefit from this book. The layman, the student, the faqih, the muhaddith, the taqlid, the ilm, it's all present in a Timothy's book. Because he speaks about the hadith himself. He talks about what's authentic, what's not authentic, who are the companions, and what the hadith mean. I tell me that he then says, Father Abu Isa, Hadith who Abi Hurairah, Allah did wrong, but the Ayash, the Hadith of Badi, but Allah did not even let me write Abi Bakr in Ayash, and I was in the Salah, 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 قال محمد وهذا أصح عندي من حديث أبي بكر بن عياش. Pay close attention now. A Tirmidhi then says, this hadith that is reported by Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash. Let's break down the chain of hadith now. In the science of hadith, there are two pieces of a hadith, two components. Okay? We have that which is called metin, and then we have that which is called senet. We have senet, and we have what? Metin. The Senate is the chain of reporters. And the Metin is what they reported. The story, the news, the information that they gave you. Let's make an example of this. Tell me your name, Afi. Hassan. Hassan? Hassan? Abdul Qawi. Abdul Qawi. Khalifa. Ismail. Ismail. Fire. And we have Mustafa Al Muhammad. Okay? Hassan, Abdul Qawi, Khalifa. Ismail, Muhammad or Mustafa? What's my name? Fahir, right, inshallah. Okay, Mustafa, I'm telling you that inshallah when I break my fast, tonight I'll have a coffee. Okay? That's what I'm telling you. Then you pass it on to Brother Ismail, who pass it on to Khalifa, who pass it on to Abdul Khali, who pass it on to Brother Hassan. Brother Hassan, you have a notebook, some paper, some paper, some pen? Please get some from somewhere quickly. Ever. This is what we call a Senate, a chain of reporters. Okay? A chain of reporters. You have a pick? Okay, fire. 
All right. You ready? Your teacher is Brother Abdul Khali. That's your teacher. So this is what you want to write down. Report it to me, Abdul Khali. Who said, Khalifa told him. Who said that Ismail told him. You gotta be quick now. The Sheikh may not want to take his time. Yeah, it's 50 hadith he wants to give you. Sorry? La, 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 can't check. <laughs> gotta write it down. Play it. Abdul Khawi told you. Who said that Khalifa told him? Who said Ismail told him? Who said that Mustafa told him? Who said that Muhammad said he wants to drink some coffee? Wants to time for his talk. Father? You got that? You got everything down? Okay, give us your chain of narration. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's not the whole thing. Go back. I do the whole chain. Every link has to be together. Told you. Told me that you wanted to get a. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Okay. Now, Abdul Kowi here for me? Did I tell Abdul Kowi that? No. I told who that? Who heard from? Is my home from? Muhammad. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's a complete chain of narration. What is the matter? The text of that of that narration is what? No, I'm not the text. What I said. I won't call you. After you share, right? No, I'm Okay. I'll play it. Good. No, I'm do that. Okay? So give those notes to Abu Bakr. Quickly. Now, you gotta get to him now. No time to check. We need you. We want the hadith. Yeah, well, Hassan. It's all right. Give me to him. Let's do that. Okay, tell it. Now, read his notes. Read the book that he wrote. Read it from memory or just... No, read it. <laughs> Abdul Qawi. Khalifa told him. Who said Ismail told him. That Mustafa told him. That Muhammad. I said what? That's all he was with. That. And complete. There's no benefit. The chain without the mention. You work, you toil, you, without no failure, no fruit. What's the, what, is, what, did, what did he say? Oh, I've got to fix that. Write it down. All right, now give me the notes, Abu Bakr. Please give me the notes. I'm going to take these notes. I'm going to photocopy them. Okay? I'm going to put it in a text message. I'm going to upload it to the internet. Upload the video. The, these notes are going to become widespread. So many people are going to get this message that it's going to become an uh, irrefutable ID. It's going to be a conclusive point that I want some coffee after they talk. So anybody who hears this, they say, what do you want some coffee after they talk? Did you hear him say that? Were you sitting in the class? Did he tell you that? They're going to say no. But it's going to become a so widespread based off of Hassan's notes. But the original statement, I want some coffee after they talk, had to come from someone. Had to come from someone. And that came from who? Mustafa. Mustafa, his student, his student, his student, to the compiler of the hadith. So therefore, let's say, how did I speak it? 500 years go by from, from this time now. We all pass. We go on to the hereafter. Now I aid us and help us. And they come across Hassan's notebooks. And they read the story from that plan, Mufti Muslim coffee at the Iftar. Said, Muhammad said, you want coffee. So where's the Iftar, eh, Sheikh? <laughs> Incomplete. In other words, Sahih al-Bukhari, raise your hand if you've met Imam al-Bukhari before. 
died in the year 256 of the Hijrah. 256 years after the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated. Who met Bukhari? Nobody. But you read his hadith. You take what he says. How is that? How many people between you and that Bukhari, Abu Bakr? So how do we depend upon Bukhari's book? Simple. You want too deep, too difficult already. Send it. I have no chain back to Bukhari. You have no chain? No, there's no chain. Kensington, Philadelphia. What about the notes? You saw Bukhari's notes? No, we have notes. Okay, what about the weak notes? That's not the answer. Ah. Who can give us the answer? How do we do our can April? Read this out of this, this is an example of, of a manuscript. He said Bukhari's notes. So that means, hold on, you can read Bukhari's notes. Push me down. Ella. Ella. The Sultan Ali. Raise your voice. No, but not this. Keep that with me. Don't dig me here, Shake. I'm not going to work tonight. Oh, it's not. This is that. That's a real life manuscript. That's an actual manuscript. Pass it around so the brothers can see. Our uh, question still lies. It's more Mustafa. Where do we get Sahih Bukhari from? Men, from whom? The ulama. Ulama. His book is Ahadahuah. We're Mashkurun, we're Mutadawah. Ahadahuah. Not the other stuff you're saying. His book has been passed down, has been spread, has been explained. It's a known fact. Bukhari wrote a book, and this is the book. Whether it's through Ulama or not, Bukhari, everybody knows Sayyid Bukhari. In other words, we said 500 years ago, why Hassan's notes became. Spread among everybody, but originally it had to be what? I think that'd be a what? And this man. It had to be a chain, because Bukhari never met the Prophet, so Bukhari wasn't a companion. A Timothy was not a. So he has an Isnad. What's the Isnad Abu Bakr? Abu Quraid. Muhammad ibn Ala ibn Quraid from? Abu Bakr ibn Ayash. From? Amesh. From? Abu Salim from Abu Hurairah. Good. Let the process of the One more time. A Tirmidhi Shaykh Rasul. Abu Quraid. Abu Quraid. Muhammad ibn Ala. Ah, he's getting deep now. It's only one chain. Abu Quraid. Muhammad ibn Ala. Abu Quraid. From Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash. From Al Amish. Amish from Abu Salim. Abu Salim is student of. That the Prophet said, Kate, 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 Kate. We have two components of a hadith. What is the first component? Senate. Which in English means? The chain. And the second part is called a what? A metin, which is the? The text, the story. Okay. Your name, Nahi? Abdullah. Give us the Isnad in the metin here. Quickly. We're all looking. Nah, you can't start opposite. You start from Hassan. Nah, Hassan is a seed. Hassan is a seed from Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is a seed from Ismail. Ismail is a seed from Mustafa. What about Khalifa? Oh, yeah, alright, alright, alright. Hassan is a seed from Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is a seed from Ismail. 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 <laughs> no, you, the narrator. You're weak. Show him out the window. Try again. Listen to that. Focus. You rush it. There's no rush. Ramadan teaches us what? Hold on. Listen to that. Clear your mind. Look at me. Don't look over there. Ah, sent. Had that word. Perfect. That is called a what? A senate in the matter. So these notes become famous 500 years later. Nobody met Hassan, but it, his book is famous. Everybody got the report. All right, now we're gonna get we're gonna get more technical now. What's your name, Aki? Amir. Okay. And this chain. Okay. Okay. Now I have two students now. Mustafa and Amir. Pay attention. We have two Isnads now. 
Mustafa and what? And Abir. Okay? And Ismail, instead of having one student being Khalifa, now he has three other students. Which name is he? Muhammad. Abdullah. Ramir. Okay. Everyone pay close attention now. We have a board, we have a whiteboard. Oh, oh. Oh. It's in the back. Yeah, yeah, we need this. All right, tight. Let's pay close attention now. Stay with me. I need you to moderate this. What is the original Isnad? Hasid, Abdullah, Khalifa, Ismail, Mustafa. Okay. Now we have another Isnad now, which is Amir. La. It's different now. Pay close attention. Amir narrates to Ismail. Ismail narrates to Ramir, Abdullah, and Muhammad. And they narrate to who? Nafis. And Nafis writes to them. I'm going to get the markers to come, to come here. Pay close attention. But it's a difference now. Okay? Amir said, I want to drink some coffee after iftar. Not Muhammad. In other words, Ismail reported how many versions? Two. Two. Two versions. What's the first version? Muhammad. Muhammad wants the coffee. What's the second version? Amir. Amir wants the coffee. You with me? Inshallah, let me get the mark because everything will become clear. Walaikum salam wa sallam. Mustafa, how many parts are there to a hadith? Two. Two. Ma'am, ma'am. A sanad and then? And a matter. I said, how many parts? What do you call it? Sanad. That's the chain. That's the chain. That's the ascent. Everybody remember, remember this, go home, pass this one. Two parts of the hadith. That statement, Ramir, already. 17, mashallah. When you say the Prophet said, why are you wearing the Izzar? If I ask you, why are you the Izzar for? You just wear it, it's weird? Huh? I can't even, man. Cover your body. Tell you, good. Why should you cover your body? Why can't you just wear what you want to wear? Why should you be modest? Who taught you to be modest? Who are you following your religion? Nobody telling the answer. It's me and my man talking. My little brother, right? Who taught us to, to, to be modest, Muslims? The Prophet. Sallallahu So do we know what goes into that statement of Abu Bakr, Rasulullah? The rigorous process? It goes into the hadith being handed down? Right, right, thank you. Now, take close attention. Here we have what? Muhammad Ibn Hamid. How many students does he have? What's the first one's name? Mustafa. Right? What's the second one's name? Mustafa. How many students does Mustafa have? One. No. Huh? Well, and who is he? Uh, Ismail. Ismail. Who's after that? Uh, Abdul Qawi. Uh, Abdul Hassan. Hassan is the compiler of the book. Sahih Hassan. Okay. Amir, what's Amir's report? Ismail. That's not, you sure? In other words, we erase this, and now we make this light come in the what? Middle. In the middle. Smaid. Where did Smaid report from? Amir. Amir. How was Amir? I thought Amir was my student. Or Amir, who else? And who else? Amir? Abdullah, who else? Who's the third? Who's the third? Who's the third? Which one? Muhammad. Okay, here we go. 
Alright? Who did David put to? Nafis. I sent them. All three of them put to who? Nafis. All three of them what? Make it simple. Nafis. That was eight. What did they say? What is their report? They said that Amir wants the coffee. Wants the coffee. And here they say Muhammad wants the coffee. How many students does Ismail have? Ismail. He has how many students? Four. Well, who's the first one? Khalifa. Khalifa? Yeah. Amir, Abdullah, and Muhammad. So three of them reported that Amir, Amir wants the coffee, and one of them reported that Muhammad wants the coffee. Everybody understand now? Yeah. Yeah. It's two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad and, and Amir are two different people. What's more yeah. authentic? Did Muhammad say it? Did Amir say it? Or did both of them say it? Yeah. How do we know? How do we determine? What makes, is, is he lying? Can we say he's a liar? He's a trustworthy Muslim. Is he mistaken? Is three right? Or just one person right? Everybody, get this point real quick. We can't go too deep. I'm just trying to show you something that's going to come this hadith. But this is exactly what happened in this hadith. There's some narrators who said that this was the state of Mujahid. It's not the prophet, so it's a mistake. Mokuf. Or Maktur. Okay? The point we're trying to get to is what? That's sufficient for now. This is a brief, very, very simple, quick Russian brief. That was what we call Tajdiru uh, Islam. Or shut it to the snack. We call it a tree of a chain of narration. And we should write down the reporters, and it makes it easy for us to see what happened in the hadith. Where did it, where, what went wrong? What was the glitch? The point I'm trying to get across to you brothers as well huh? is that every single Muslim should have some basic knowledge of the science of hadith. Basic knowledge. Simple A, B, and C's of the science of hadith. One of the biggest benefits that you get from this is what? You may not pick up a book and read it in Arabic. You may not be able to read Arabic. You may work 10, 12 hours out of the day. Whatever the case may be. You may not go overseas. But it increases you in your value and your appreciation for the Sunnah. You have more respect and love for the Sunnah. When you know that people sacrifice their lives, years out of their lives, their whole lives, and bringing you Sahih Bukhari, and bringing you Tibbidi, for you to implement it, for you to act upon it, for you to read. So the question is, how often do you read Hadith? How many classes do we give on hadith? How much attention is shown on the legacy of the Prophet Wasallam? How close are we to those people? Okay? So there are many other benefits you can take from it. As a layman, everyday Muslim. Okay? Verifying information. Who said that? Malcolm said this and actually told him. Did you hear him say it? Are you sure he said that? What did he mean? Kada. Well, oh no, uh, uh. And this happens on a daily basis. This happens on a what? This happens on a daily basis, okay? Who do you take your information from? And why? And what is more authentic? Five people say one thing about Nafis, two people say another thing about Nafis. These five people are his students, they study with him, they eat with him, they travel with him. And then one person who's an outsider who's a foreigner said, Nafis said this and said that. Whose narration will we take? Etc. Everyone understand this? So therefore, this hadith that we just read, Imam Matibu the Rahim Allah says, had a hadith on Gharib. He says, this hadith is weak. When a Tirmidhi says, Gharib, and Ya'ni Ba'if. A Tirmidhi Rahim Allah, he declares the hadith to be inauthentic. And he then quotes from his shaykh, uh, Al-Bukhari Rahim Allah, he says, I asked Muhammad ibn Ismail about this hadith, and he mentioned that there's another version of this hadith. He says, what? Hadith, he says, Al-Hasn ibn Rabi, Hadith ibn Abul Ahmas, and Al-Amash, and Mujahid ibn Qawdahu. In other words, Al Abash has two students. One is Abu Bakr Ayash, and the second one is huh? Abu Al Akwas. Abu Al Akwas reported from Abash from Mujahid that it was a statement of Mujahid. The type of, you know Mujahid in general was Mustafa? Mujahid. When you read him in Kathir, you see his name often. So, Mujahid said. Who was Mujahid? Mujahid. Good. Who was his teacher? Asent. What country did he live in? Where's he from? I think he's from Berber. I think he's from Berber. What country did he live in? Not his race, not his ethnic background. What country did he live in? Where did Ibn Abbas live? Thailand. 
So when Jang was one of his prized pupils, he most likely lived where? In Mecca. But that mean that's where he was from, where he stayed the rest of his life. But for sure we know that he was where? In Mecca. When Jang the Jebel was born blind, he, could ne he never saw anything. Huh? And he, they, what, was the, what was the nickname of Mujahid? They used to call him what? They used to call him Al-Mustaf. They used to call him Al-Mustaf. Mujahid Al-Jabr? Yes. La, 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 Don't write down anything. Write, write it down here. Write it. No one can ever erase this. You can't lose this, inshallah. Maybe the law, maybe. Streets of Philadelphia, you can't. <laughs> so everybody understand this? That a Tidmadi Rahimallah and a Bukhari, they both declared this hadith to be what? Weak. Okay. Your name is Abdullah? What is a, I need to erase the board, please. What is a weak hadith? Ah, Abdullah, that. You can't erase it. That. You can that. 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 Ah. Okay. Ibn Hanif. Can you erase the board, please? Go ahead. Father Abdullah, what? What is a what is a da'i hadith? Get some tissue. Get some tissue. Sorry, get some tissue. It's not like a song like a lot of a lot of a lot of okay. a lot of people don't they don't. What's your name, Rafi? Dawood. Dawood. Father, what's a da'i hadith? A glitch in the chain. Fine. What's your name, Khalid. What's the Dayi Hadith? Good answer. Try it. Rabir, what's your name, Dayi Hadith is? Okay, question, it's my ear. Can we understand a Dayi Hadith and we don't understand a Sahih Hadith? So, what is a Sahih Hadith in Hafiz? Sahih Hadith? A Sahih Hadith? A Sahih Hadith? A Sahih Hadith? Dhabit, the son of Dhabit? No. Men, men who Yeah, that. Yeah, No, no. 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 No, لا <laughs> Now we're walking out every day. Huh? Right. What is a Sahih Hadith? We gave a lesson on this before. This is important. Even a lot. Very important. Huh? It must have a chain. Number one. Chain. It has to have a chain. Number two. Chain must be tussled. It has to be, what is that in English? What's more tussled? It has to be connected. Connected chain. If it's a chain, it already means it's connected. Where do you even wear a chain that's not connected? <laughs> On your neck? Yeah. I've never seen that. <laughs> I didn't ask Aluka. I'm not asking Aluka, I'm asking you. Part of it has to be able to think what? <laughs> right. You don't want tape recorders. No problem. Number three. The rejab, so if a woman reports something that's rejected, huh? What would you say? Yeah, yeah. See? Next mistake, right? A woman? Worrying about the shots they're taking at you. The rejab or the what? Because it could be women also. Aisha. I'm a bit of a man, the student of Aisha, from the Tabi'i. The narrators, and don't say men, narrators. Could be male or could be? Narrators must be what? Trustworthy. Trustworthy. What does that mean? Trustworthy. Trustworthy. 
Number four, according to Nabis, they got a hadith. Hadith. What's that name? Religious integrity. Religious integrity. Number five. No. Decision. Decision. Okay. You got five conditions so far. What's next? That's it. Anybody say anything different? Change, the Tighter. That's a homework assignment. It's all right. Because we explained this last year. No, this is two years ago. We gave this lesson. What are the conditions for a Sahih Hadith? This is wrong. Yes. Some of it is right, but yes. like that is wrong. Change, uh, assignment. That's your homework. It's homework. Homework. What are the, what are the, how many conditions are there for authentic hadith and what are they? That's the whole design. Right, Dawood? Moving on. We said that this hadith is what? Authentic or, or inauthentic? We said it's weak. Now, the question is, if it's weak, why are we sitting here talking about it? And why did Timothy mention it in his book? Timothy was a student of Bukhari. Why would he mention the Bible Hadith in his book? We say in brief because it's not the topic of our class. It's not the appropriate time or place to go into details of this. However, we say all of the scholars of the past did not make a condition for only genuine narrations. Some of them compiled what they felt they wanted to compile. Whether it was weak or whether it was strong. Everybody understand this? Okay? And that is another widespread mistake. We say, oh, don't read that book. You can't read it from the Why not? Because it's Bible Hadith in it. Okay, play it. So take all the hadith of the people of the past, they would eat and this was on, and burn them. Because they all have weak and fabricated hadith in them. Hadith being weak is one thing. You using it, you believe in it, you care it, that's a different story. Okay? And then there is a further level, which is a hadith could be weak according to the science of hadith, but its meaning could be sound. And that is up to the people of knowledge, of course. Not for the layman every not walking down the street, not about this. The point we're trying to get to in brief is what? Is that a Timothy, rahimahullah, he declared the hadith to be weak himself. So that's another benefit he gave to the reader. He told you that it's weak. So why did he report it? And why are we explaining it? And that is because every hadith that's weak doesn't mean that it's useless. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that it's useless. There's no benefit to be taken. It doesn't mean that. Okay? We build the authentic hadith. But the Raif Hadith, they have a different level and a different issue. Everybody throw this. Now let's move on. Uh, the Hadith says, Kawlubu, Sufi that the Shia to you. The devils are chained down and locked down in the month of Ramadan. What does this mean? I was eight. Actually locked down. Right. Do we any other people now say otherwise? No, it's another another. another we went over this before. Two things. One of the things is that they have physically locked down. That the Shaitan are physically locked down in the month of Ramadan. Right. And the second thing? The other one is that they're more. They're evil. They're evil, exactly. The evil Shaitan are locked down. No, not the evil. The evil. The evil is locked down. It's not all as all as good. Shaitan or they're evil? They're confusing. Talk about what? What you said first, first of all, like they're physically locked down, and second, was the evil she had themselves were like them. That's why the little one, they was like broke. Okay. Those right. Is there a third opinion? We mentioned a third opinion of Qurtubi. That they're not locked down at all. But instead, the people, huh, is less evil. Because they're controlling their mouths, they're controlling their bellies, they're controlling their private areas. We mentioned all three opinions, and we said the strongest opinion was what? Yeah, the physical lockdown, the evil one. That is states in this hadith, even though it's life. As some scholars of the past said, a weak hadith is better than the opinion of men. A weak hadith is better than the opinion of men. But we're not going to get into that right now. Okay? But we explained this before. The three opinions of people knowledge, and we said that the strong opinion, the correct opinion, is with the Sunnah states. The shayateen are locked down, literally. But there are other hadith that make a further explanation What's meant by the shayateen are the what? The evil marada, as it says here in this hadith. I write like this. The author or the explainer of the book, Al Hafid Al Mubarak Fuli Rahimahullah, that our mercy upon his soul, he says here. Um, uh, 
قوله سفيدا قال الحافظ في الفتح بالمضمنه المرهومه معناها فهم فقير مكسورة اي شدت بالاصفات وهي الاغلال وهي بمعنى سلسله الشياطين وفي روايه النسائي ترك الكلابه عن ابي هريره باللفظ وتقل فيه مرض الشياطين ومرض الجن جمع مالك كطلبه مجاهده وهو متمرد بالشر ومنه امرد لتجرده من الشعر وهو تخصيص بعد تعميم او عطف تفسير وبيان كالتكميم وقيل الحكمة في تقييد الشياطين وتصفيدهم كي لا يوسوسوا في الصائبين وأمارة ذلك التنازل أكثر المنهكمين في التغيان عن المعاصي ورجوع بالتوبة إلى الله تعالى وأما ما يوجد خلال ذلك في بعض فإنها تأثيرات من تسميرات الشياطين أغلقت بعمق تلك النفوس الشريرة وباغت في روسها He goes on and he explains this term in the Arab language. They will be hang, and they will be locked down with feathers, with manacles. Okay? They can't move. And then he says, the sign that the Shia thing are actually locked down is that Muslims who are terrible sinners, who do you find in the month of Ramadan? Look at the masjid right now. Do you think if it wasn't Ramadan, there'd be this many people in the masjid? Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Okay? That's clear. He then says, well, what about the evil acts that people commit in Ramadan? If he walked outside the masjid, he was smoking, drinking, tattooed bar up the street. What is it, 38? What is it, the name of it? Yeah. Uh -huh. What's it called? Vicious thing. A major sin. To tattoo someone. Uh, who's telling them to tattoo the people? He says here, this is closer, because this is what we mentioned last time. What do you have to According to Muhammad bin Hajar, what's going on? He said that that is the deep penetration of those shayateen on those people's souls. The devils have went so far into their hearts and into their souls, they don't have to whisper to them anymore. It's like engraved in their hearts to do evil now. So just think about that. If you continue to disobey Allah in the month of Ramadan, and the devils, the major devils, all of the devils, whatever interpretation you take, are locked down, then there's something very scary about your own mouth. You continue to disobey Allah and do evil, major sins, and the devils are chained down, something's wrong. You need to, you need to fix that. I'm speaking to myself personally, you all need to fix that. So, therefore, um, we want to stop here. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time right now. We have um, another responsibility at another next year, a lecture with an hour. We ask Allah to give us beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Anybody have any comments or questions before we stop? Mujahid and Joe. No, other than other than you. Besides you. Alhamdulillah wa ala alameen. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa hamdika. Shalom wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala